one of Rome's most classic dishes, cacio pepe. It's really simple, right? There's black pepper, there's pecorino cheese, and there's pasta of some description, and then some of the water that the pasta was cooked in. A little bit of salt, that's it. There is nothing else in this. It is a creamy emulsified white sauce on your pasta, laced with peppercorns, black pepper, um, that's been crushed up freshly, so as it's fruity and zingy and delicious. But it is one of Italy's classic dishes. It has been around forever and comes and goes in trends every day. I'm gonna show you how to make my version. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. We're gonna start with two, two different size sieves, like a fineish kind of one, and one that's a little bit bigger, and a blender, which has gone missing. But don't worry, we found it. Peppercorn, black peppercorns, right? Put them into your blender -y guy. And then we're gonna give them a little squirt in the blender. One thing that I love in a cacio pepe is consistent black pepper. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now it's saying yes. All right. A couple of squeezes. Get a bowl. We're gonna go through the big one first. Shake all around. What you'll end up with is like very rough cracked pepper left in, in the uh, sieve. We pop that back into the blender. Yes. Same again. Uh, you just do that a few times basically until it's, it's all fine enough to come through. Okay, so now you have kind of like it's one size, there's no big chunky bits in it, but what there is in it is lots of very fine pepper that I really don't want in there. So I put it into the fine sieve and then get rid of all that super fine black pepper. Is this job OCD or is it This is proper OCD. Like I've got, I've got issues. What else do you need? You need uh, a blender, which will help you. So I'm, I'm kind of showing you the cheats version of, um, of cacio pepe, right? Cacio pepe has this beautiful pecorino cheese, which I've grated. And the thing that creates this sauce is the pecorino cheese and the pasta water. Now, traditionally, they would just dump the pecorino cheese in after the pasta's cooked in a bowl with some of the pasta water and then basically toss the pan until it emulsifies, right? It's very hard to get right. If your pan's too hot, the water's too hot, the cheese will coagulate and turn into sort of like stringy cheese, you're in all sorts of trouble. You put in too much water, it'll be thin. Uh, if the temperature's not right, it won't emulsify at all and it'll just be like grated cheese through a bit of water, pretty much. So I just wanted to show you a foolproof way that no matter what happens, you can, you know, win at Cacio Pepe, right? I've got half a pack of pasta here, 250 grams. I've picked this super fat spaghetti. It's number something. It's not the normal one, it's, a, it's like a little bit thicker. It's really nice for, for Cacio Pepe. Give it a twist, put it in. The water. Now, in my water, I want to add a very, very small amount of salt. Normally in pasta, you'll see me like dumping loads of salt in. But because I want to use the pasta water, the pasta water here is really important. It cannot be salty, otherwise we're in trouble. Also, pecorino cheese, very salty cheese. Do you know what I mean? So if your pasta water, which we're using in the sauce, is salty plus a salty cheese, you're going to be in trouble pretty quick, right? So on this packet pasta, it says nine minutes, right? Nine minutes is too long. I'm telling you now. So we're going to set a timer for seven minutes that gives us two minutes to mess around with the sauce at the end right what i'm now going to do is i've got another little blendery guy here and i'm going to grab some of the pasta water like just a little bit so it's like i don't know a quarter of a cup dash of cold water 
because I don't want to cook my cheese, right? And then I'm gonna drop my cheese into this blender. Now, you could use one of those stick blender guys if you wanted. You could use a, um, I don't know, all the other flavors of blenders that are out there pretty much. I'm using a Vitamix, because I quite like it. And then we're gonna start blitzing it. So what happens really quickly is that it starts emulsifying, right? The way any kind of blender works is that there is friction, huge amount of friction inside because of the blades, right? That friction creates heat and the heat then emulsifies the cheese with the water, right? Basic but a little sciencey thing going on there. So instead of you tossing the pan off, getting the heat exactly right with a like, honestly, probably a four or five degree margin, just let friction do the work inside the, the blender because it will bring together your cheese and the water much better than you can, right? I just want to show you the consistency of this now after, after a minute. So have a look at that. It's like silky smooth. It's hot because of the hot water and the friction of the blender. Like, but from a consistency, consistency perspective, that is like, if Uncle Polly was doing it by hand, he would be a legend if he brought a cacio pepe to the table that was that smooth. It would mean that he had just, all the stars aligned and everything was perfect. I've done it in a blender in a minute. So I'm gonna leave that on, the blender, just on low. So as it keeps moving, moving the cheese in the water to make sure that I get the right consistency, it doesn't solidify again. It's moving, we're well, great. We are at 16 seconds, right? Left on the pasta water. So now, look at that. I was really smart and had a colander ready. So you need the pasta water, so set a bowl under your colander. I mean, the thing is, ketchup pepe is a summer dish, is that an autumn dish, a spring dish? I think it's an anytime dish. I think it's so filled with tradition that I think that's why nobody messes with it pretty much. Like, you know how you see a million versions of carbonara? You don't see a million versions of ketchup pepe. It's pretty true to the origin of what it was. Um, and for me, eating it with friends is, you know, or at home, like a lot of people would, you know, love to have a kebab when they've been out having a few drinks. I'm dying for some cacio pepe, trust me, like that's it. So I've poured some of my, my water, pasta water in here. And I'm just gonna bring that up to a boil and I'm gonna add a rude amount of the pepper. It's rude, right? I've never actually measured it, so maybe we should, as soon as we've gotta put a recipe up. So what's that, one tablespoon? Two tablespoons, and a bit. Two generous tablespoons. And what we're gonna do is bring that pasta water up to a boil, and the starch from the pasta inside that water. And what it's gonna do is start exercising that starch again, getting it going, releasing all the flavor out of our pepper. And you can smell it, it's fruity, it's kinda, do you smell that from there already? It's like black pepper can be fruity or it can be harsh. By blitzing it, we've taken all that harsh burnt exterior of a black pepper cone away. So you don't get that super harshness. You get a heat, very clean heat, and it's kind of fruity. So pan is up to the boil, and then we're gonna turn it down to a low heat. We're gonna get our pasta in there. And now we're gonna to toss off the pasta in the water with the black pepper. Now immediately what happens, because the pasta's come out of the water, it like, it wants to suck up any kind of moisture at all. So what we're doing is letting it suck up uh, our black pepper flavored starchy water, right? So now it's time for the sauce. Now remember, I've got this on the lowest possible heat, right? If you have it on a high heat, you're gonna cook your cheese and it's all gonna fall apart. 
just don't do it, right? So now, I'll take my pan off the heat and we're gonna go in with our cheese sauce. All right, so in you can see is that the pasta's kind of sitting in, it's about halfway down the pasta, right? In sauce. And now what we're gonna do is get a nice clean tea towel and we're gonna sit it over the top of the pasta and it's just gonna rest. And what's happening here is, is that the pasta, as it finishes cooking, is absorbing some of that that beautiful cheese sauce and the pasta water with the pepper that was in there. And it will continue to cook a little bit. And as it does so, it'll dry up some of the sauce that's in the pan. Now, a brilliant cacio pepe has a good amount of sauce that's hugging to the pasta. If you serve it straight away, the pasta will, will continue to cook, continue to suck up any of the sauce, and you'll just end up having this sort of dry, claggy, kind of very hard work to eat pasta dish. I don't want that. I want a beautiful silky cacio pepe. So I'm just letting it rest for two to three minutes. This is a great thing to do with any pasta dish or any risotto dish. So as you can get the consistency bang on when it's sitting at the table. All right, let's have a look at this. It's had two to three minutes just to sort of sit on the stove. And look at, you can see the sauce, there's not a huge amount of, of sauce left in the bottom of that pan very very little and it's becoming thicker so what's beautiful about that is is that now is that a consistency that will just coat the pasta beautifully at this stage you could if you're an absolute fiend on the old pecorino you could add a little bit more pecorino cheese at this stage and it would kind of give you some of the cheese would stick to the pasta a little bit more sort of like old school style cacio pepe um, if you want at this stage. But, so we can see now that I've got literally no sauce left at the bottom. So we're in a good place now to start actually plating. So just grab some of your pasta, right? And then just let it fall. And as it falls, just twist it a little bit. You don't have to go crazy, but just twist it a little bit. Again, tossing the pasta around. You get a nice little mini one for the top. Fold it over and there you go. Really simple, really delicious. It's a classic. It is Cacio Pepe. Thanks for watching and if you like that, please click subscribe because there's plenty more where that came from. Also, if there's a recipe that you actually want to see me make, chuck it in the comments below and we'll get around to it. Thanks for watching.